Hey guys, what's going on? It's the Interior Auto Mechanic. Today we're going to be working on the brakes on our race-built Yaris, also known as Project Slow Cart. So in this video we're going to be removing both front rotors, calipers, brake pads, and brake lines. I'll show you here in a minute what I have to replace them with. So starting out, I'll show you the caliper. This is going to be off of a 2009 through 2013 Corolla, just a 1.8 liter. Um, pretty, pretty simple, standard. It's a little bit bigger than what we have currently. Actually, quite a bit bigger than what we have currently, but all of this big brake upgrade kit that I'm doing, um, I've kind of put this list together based off of some things that I've read on Yaris World. So should all be plug and play, hopefully, fingers crossed. So we're gonna replace the caliper with this one here. Then we've got our Hawk brake pads, and this is the part number that I came up with that looked the best for what I'm needing. We've got our StopTech braided stainless lines for the front. There's your part number as well. And then here is our rotor. This is off a of 2014 Yaris SE. They have about, I think they're about an inch bigger uh, rotor from factory. So the w easiest way that I put this kit together, because it's a lot cheaper than, say, doing like a Brembo kit or something comparable, I found the parts on Rock Auto and had them shipped to me, aside from the brake pads and the StopTech uh, braided lines. It was the easiest way to do it was to look on eBay and then also to look on Rock Auto. In this case, the Rock Auto rotors were cheaper, so I went with those because they're a wearable part. I don't need, in my opinion, I don't need slotted and drilled rotors. It's just more of a look thing. It's not gonna benefit us all that we much. We just went with a solid standard SE rotor. And then also on the calipers, these came off of eBay, if I remember correctly, and it was a pretty good deal. I got basically left and right front rotors, and it also came with brake pads as well. I'm not gonna use the brake pads, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the tripod set up, video removal and install, and then we'll do it on the other side as well. If I see anything or run into any issues, I'll be sure to note that too. Also for our rear brakes, we're just gonna keep those stock. I'll probably end up replacing the shoes, springs, and you know any of, if it needs adjusters or anything like that first tip and trick that i do have is if you're going to be working on your brakes or any suspension components especially if they've got rust if you have the option to take your wheel off and go ahead and soak everything with like penetrating oil or something similar to that as i've done on this car in previous videos it will just make your life so much easier i went ahead and soaked all of my bolts that i'm going to be removing and should make life a lot easier. All right, guys, so to take our caliper off, we have two 14 millimeter bolts that hold on the caliper itself. We'll then remove the caliper bracket bolts here in a minute. But we can go ahead and take these off. Set those aside because those are important. Don't know that we'll be reusing any of this hardware, but I would rather have it and just in case the other caliper set that we got off of the Corolla did not come with it. All right, put that guy right there. And that is held up and it's not hurting the hose. Not that it really matters because we're gonna be taking that hose off anyway. Um, but we can go ahead and remove that now too. That is a 14, 14 millimeter bolt on the back side over here that Basically, it's just a bracket that holds the brake hose uh, to the strut. All right, that's this little stubby guy here compared to our other longer ones. So that is loose, that's great. Um, next, I am going to go ahead and grab our brake hose. And I'll probably go ahead and hook it up to our new caliper as well. Um, just that way when I disconnect this other hose, 
Um, I don't have a ton of brake fluid on the ground. Um, I'd really rather not have that. I've got a little catch pan down here just in case anything does drain. I've got a full, there's like a little brace clip thing. Um, I think it's called like just like a C-clip or something like that. I'll grab some pliers, pull that off. Um, once I get this uh, bolt undone on the line, and yeah, we'll go from there. This is our new big bad boy. Um, it's going to be replacing this bracket. Brake pads obviously get changed out too. And then also the caliper itself. So it's bigger, but not only that, it's also shiny. Uh, Silver is not my favorite, especially like kind of hillbilly chrome. Uh, but hey, it'll get the job done. We can always paint them later if we want to. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart. Um, get this caliper probably hanging up here next to this one so that when I disconnect the brake line, I can have this other one already hooked up and should be pretty simple. Kind of got a yellow spaghetti mess going on right now, but that's okay. This is up and out of the way, so we can kind of keep him over here for the time being. We'll get that new hose put on, I guess, next. I guess I can do that. I can go ahead and pull this little cap. So typically, this is a little bit different of a design, um, typically there is a kind of like a hook that comes off the end of this where the banjo bolt actually goes through. Um, however, there is not one on this, and I guess that's just so you can have it for different applications if need be. Uh, in our case, I just want to make sure I'm putting this on properly so I don't have to do it twice. Let's see here. You know what, I guess I am just going to go ahead and take off the other hose first, deal with a little bit of brake fluid leak and I can always spray that off. And then I want to make sure that the lengths of these lines are the same. I bought these a long time ago on eBay, so. Alright, so we have taken our C-clip off. And I had already broken this line loose before, so it should be okay. Little tip for whoever's doing this, if anybody else is doing this, don't pull your C-clip yet, because you'll end up having to hold your other uh, hose by hand. That's my own stupid mistake, but that's okay. Okay, so we got a little bit of fluid there, nothing too crazy. But, let's see here. Yeah, I got a feeling this cable is not going to work. Let's see, that. maybe. Well, that's saying it's close. Probably have to route it a little different, but I think we can get that work. So let's go ahead and get this other caliper out of the way. Should have done that before. Alright. There's this guy over here. Let's try and see if the banjo bolt will go on. <laughs> that way we don't have fluid leaking everywhere. bracket is on there. We ended up just putting a nut on the back side. And then we can always adjust our hose through as need be. Hopefully we won't run into any rubbing issues with our sway bar end lengths, um, which our sway bar is looking a little crusty. So in time we might upgrade that. Um, might end up in all honesty having to replace the subframe. I don't know. Hopefully not because I really don't want to have to do that. We shall see. So, we're moving along. Um, let's do our caliper bracket next. And those are some monsters. I think they're 17s if I remember right. Yep, they are 17 millimeters. So. I don't have a lot of faith in this, but we're going to give this one a go. These impacts are about as old as what I am. 
so I don't know how the batteries fit any good still. That ain't gonna matter because it won't fit. Solid. Okay. The problem I've got is looks like the pipe fairy came in and moved our pipe that we used to break loose. Give it a shot. Let's see. Not ideal, but this is the pipe. Oh yeah, I can make that work. Yeah. All else fails. You can always use a Dodge Dart lower front support beam for a pipe. Oh, yeah. Oh, Voila. We taking it apart. Perfect. Okay. So now it's a little bit of anti seize that actually helped to come off really well. Um these don't look great. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, they, they definitely got some rust and stuff on the back side. But for right now, we'll be fine. We'll deal with that when you start hearing some wheel bearing noise or something like that. There's no play at all so i will take that all day long so we'll take a little bit of brake clean clean this all up um uh, doesn't really even look like it needs to be sanded because somebody had the wherewithal to actually put just a dot of grease on the back side which is perfect that's why those came off so easy clean these threads really good up on these lug studs wipe it down probably put a little drop of grease on each corner there um throw our rotor on put our caliper bracket back on and hopefully get our caliper put back on with our new brake pads. I would typically take and sand this down because most of the time there is rust buildup. However, like I said, somebody actually had put grease all over this um, hub assembly before, um, and it's pretty much smooth as can be. You can see where they've grinded on it before. Um, there's no major rust lip or anything like that. I've cleaned all up and around here. Um, feel pretty comfortable with putting the new uh, rotor and everything back on. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of grease, put, just put a drop on each spot, and yeah, be right back. Literally put a small little dot. Alright, we've got that smeared around. So, we've got our new rotor here, and the good thing with this is these are a like a good brand rotor. Uh, they don't come like super greasy or anything like that. So they shouldn't rust as fast. It's at least quality. So I'm just putting that on there just to make sure this thing doesn't flop around too much. Um, we'll go ahead and get our uh, caliper bracket put on just the size comparison. We are every bit of, I would say, an, mm, probably a half inch bigger. Bigger brake pads, bigger caliper. Should stop better. We should be able to reuse our bolts um, for our brackets. These are just, you know, 17 millimeter. So something to keep in mind, these are all refinished. So these have all been repainted and whatnot. So um, when you're putting these back on, you might need to run your bolts uh, down through here. Um, just so that the threads, if they've got any paint on them, will get cleaned up. <clears throat> yep, that's the spec. <laughs> and... Yep, that's 
stuff with it. Okay, so we've got all this on. We're going to put our clips in that hold our brake pads in, lube them up, um, and hopefully be just about done with this side. They are all the same, so cool. Kind of makes it a little bit easier. Cool. Well, that looks a lot better. And something I did splurge and buy, I mean, I kind of splurged on all this stuff, but I bought ceramic fortified uh, brake system grease, which is probably just a fancy way to say I got screwed and paid too much money for something that I really didn't need. But it says that it can withstand very high temperatures, so uh, we are going to be running a ceramic pad. So, it says it can stand up to negative 50 degrees, up to 3,000 degrees. So, we'll give it a shot. Alright, main goal is not to get it on the pad. So, we'll smear this all around. There we go. Nice and made it. Perfect. Okay, and those are pretty well greased. Uh, top and bottom, I'm happy with that. So, front one's in. Do the back one next. All right, we're in. Let me grease the back of this thing. And I would recommend greasing it after the fact. Um, makes it a little bit easier so that you're not handling something covered in grease. And you can just smear it around. You don't have to worry about it getting on the front of your pad. So, swing this bad boy around. Cool. Tight. So, everything is on. Everything seems to be good. Um, we can take this nut back, or this lug nut back off. Alright guys, we're back. This is actually like a day after I did the other one, um, and I've got the camera set up on this side so you can actually kind of see more of what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to basically do the same thing we did on the other side as over here, so hopefully this will give you a different view. Let's crack these caliper bolts loose, and one thing I did yesterday, um, I did soak the bolts, and I know I keep harping on this. But with this car, has been sitting for as long as what it has been. I uh, soaked the bolts really well with some PV Blaster, let it sit overnight. And so far, it's made my life a lot easier. And we're going to go ahead, you probably won't be able to see this one up here. But this is for the brake hose. The part that actually keeps it um, onto the... Uh, Strut, like the bolt that keeps it onto the strut, it's got to loosen it, take it off. Alright, set that guy aside as well. Let me grab my trusty yellow hanger here. So our caliper's up and out of the way. Um, we should be able to move on to our caliper bracket, which is going to be our 17 millimeter. Yep, we're going to have to get the 
breaker bar real quick. Which, as I said before, is a big aluminum piece off of a Dodge Dart because I can't find the actual breaker bar. But this works. Okay, we got that one. hitting over there before. I grab my 3 8 ratchet and socket. I'd rather use half inch, but in this case, for some reason, the strut bolt um, that's actually going through like the knuckle is out further on this side than it is on the other, so it's actually hitting um, our piece. As you can probably tell, this side I'm talking a lot less and explaining a lot less, hopefully just so you can watch. And if you're doing this yourself, you'll know what to expect. Get both of them off, and then we can take this caliper bracket off and set that aside. We can set our rotor aside as well. Um, this side, same way, someone was smart enough to put some little dots of grease around on the actual mounting surface where the rotor goes. Um, some on the studs as well. I am going to clean that up uh, and put some new grease down and then yeah, we can reassemble this All right Let's get this bad boy side on here. And yes, you can put if they've got the factory screws uh, to hold your rotor on just while you're working on it you can put those back in if you really want to. In my case, somebody had already broke mine off previously, so those are like broken flush with the hub assembly itself, and there's no, you could tap it and drill it, but there's really no sense in it. So um, in our case, I just use a lug nut, keep our rotor all the way back, and we get this bad boy mounted. Those are both finger tight, so we'll go ahead and tighten them down completely. It's a spec, obviously. If you're doing this, look up spec for me. Doesn't matter. I can retorque these anytime I need to, but look up spec if you're going to torque these down. In my case, I just go to one I feel okay with it. Probably won't be able to see this great, but all I'm doing is loosening our brake line, attempting to, oh, there we go, Ooh, be sure to use a line wrench on these too, uh, really good investment because if you round this off it's yeah, not a fun time, and a line wrench just so you know is basically boxed all the way around except for one spot where you can actually slide it in, and that way you decrease greatly the chances of rounding the nut that's on your brake lines off. Okay. They're off and dripping. It's fine. Leave that hang for a second. Basically, what you're seeing drip right now is just because this bolt is not tightened down all the way, which is cool. We'll snug it down a little bit. Not want to go crazy on it because we still need to adjust it. We don't want to screw up our washers.
Okay, now I'm gonna wipe my hands off again. And we are going to go ahead and grab our brake pads. Okay, so we are in on our clips for our brake pads, and now we can grease our brake pads up, slide our caliper back on, adjust our brake hose, and knock on wood, this slide should be pretty much done. Okay, those are not tight, obviously, and our brake line is not tight, obviously, as you probably just saw. Um, Got to move this bracket to where I can run a bolt through and then also put a nut on there as well. Um, we want to make sure that our brake line is not kinked or anything like that. Um, so, I'm going to find a nut for this bolt, which is what came off of our original line. Do the same thing that we did before, uh, run the bolt through, and then put the nut on the back side, and it should work just as we need. Okay, so I didn't, I wasn't able to use our original bolt. That is okay. I'm gonna route it this way instead, so I can always keep an eye on that nut, and also shouldn't run any risk of hitting the line. Okay, that's good and snug. We should be relatively good there, I believe. We'll see. When we take it to the suspension guy, too, he'll route it the way it needs to go with the new coilovers. So you're going to need to tighten these with spec, so in that case, I don't have spec right off hand. So your best bet's to Google it and see what spec is for your specific car. In this case, we're done. So uh, I'm going to take this lug nut back off 
And I think I'm going to give you guys, since you've stuck with me this entire time, a little sneak peek of what our wheel situation is going to look like. All right, guys, one other thing I want to say, I'm not showing on camera that I'm going to be bleeding the brakes, but just assume that I am because I, I am going to. Uh, if you go to do this, be sure to bleed your brakes. Have somebody help you do it. Uh, it's like a two-person job. It's pretty simple. If you don't know how to do it, just look it up on YouTube, and yeah, you can just figure it out that way. All right, guys, thank you so much for being troopers and getting through this episode with me. I know it's ran probably a little bit long. However, big brake kit done. You can do this in roughly an hour to, you know, probably an hour on each side if you're somewhat mechanically inclined. Um, you can definitely get it knocked out faster if you're a professional. Um, I'm not a pro, but with filming and everything, it took me about an hour per side. Filming tends to extend things just a little bit so I can get my camera angles right and my lighting all correct. So here's a sneak peek of what's coming for our wheels. Should look really good. I've seen these on a couple Yaris's. You're seeing it correct. It does have a Mazda badge in the center. Um, I'm going to see about finding a different center cap that we can pop in. And these are Mazda Miata NB Miata wheels specifically. They're 16 inch um, and should give us, you know, it gives us a little bit extra clearance around our caliper. And overall, I think they look really good. They're kind of like a twist wheel. And I picked these up for really cheap. I think I got the whole set for like 125 bucks, 150 bucks, something like that. Um, and they are an alloy wheel. They're pretty light. Um, I would love to run an aftermarket wheel. I'd love to get some like Volks or something like that in time. However, until we see how the car does and how it performs, I'm not going to drop like 1500 or $2,000 on just on rims. Um, this is a pretty cheap good alternative option to an aftermarket wheel because these are a factory wheel you're getting factory quality um, you're not going to have to worry hopefully too much about them breaking like a cheap aftermarket wheel would i know you don't get as much look necessarily but i think they look pretty dang good so anyway i'm going to end the episode here again thank you so 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 much for watching um Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. The subscriptions mean the world to me. The likes, I love them. Keep them coming. And please put your comments down below. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you to FTG Tuning. Thank you to Famuda Oil Drain Valves. We'll see you guys in the next episode.